Basingstoke Town manager sacked, Totten tried to go top, and were the bison buzzing against the bees? Hello and welcome to Sports Week, I'm Lee Jarvis. Basingstoke Town Football Club has announced that manager Frank Gray and his assistant Jerry Murphy have been released from their roles with immediate effect. The pair have been at the club for the last four years, but recent results have led to their departure. Basingstoke Town are currently sitting in 10th position, 12 points off the last playoff position. Jason Bristow and Kevin Braybrook have been appointed as their replacements until the end of the season. Here on Sports Week, we're now joined by Basingstoke's new manager, Jason Bristow. Jason, congratulations on your Thank appointment. You um, what did you make of the departure of Frank Gray? It's, it's obviously very sad when, when any manager leaves the club. Um, obviously, we were set targets at the start of the season, and the chairman's obviously looking at it, thinking maybe it's time for a change. If, if we're going to, you know, if, we, if we're not looking like we're going to reach those targets, it, it might be the right time to, to make the change. Um, so it's very sad. Um, personally, from my point of view, you know, I've learned a lot from Frank. Um, he's given me my chance in, in, in coaching. So I've had a lot of respect for Frank. Um, unfortunately, it's his departure that's given, him, given me my opportunity now. So it's a sad, obviously, when Frank's gone. Um, but it's, a, it's an opportunity now that's come up for me and, and one I'm looking to, to take and, and push on now. You've been involved with the club for a very long time. Uh, yeah. You've been called Mr. Basingstoke. I've uh, been told that you've got um, the Basingstoke blood running through your veins. Are you the perfect man to take this club forward? It's something that I've wanted for a long time. Um, obviously, having had to retire through injury uh, a couple of years ago, it's the next goal is to, is to, to manage the club. You know, I want to be someone that can, can affect the team, someone that can really be a positive influence and, and take the club forward. If I can't do it on the pitch, then I want to be able to do it off the pitch. So it's, you know, I will give, I will give my all, I will give 100% and if, if what I give isn't good enough then I will hold my hands up and say it's not. But I'm confident that I've got the abilities to, to take this club forward to the next step. You'd also be just described as the um, fans' choice uh, of a new manager. Is that added pressure? It or? is added pressure. Yeah, I've, you know, throughout my career at Basingstoke I've always had the support from the, from the fans. It's something that, that means a lot to me, it's something that means a lot to the players because we've all got the support from the fans. Um, it is, it, it is added, added pressure because I think a lot's expected, um, but it, it's a challenge that I'm looking to rise above and really come out and, and repay them for their support with, with results on the pitch. So what are the things for the rest of the season then? We've set our own targets, um, but it's, I know it's a cliche, but we will be taking it game by game. And you know we've got two quick games in, in succession. so. You know, we've got a game Saturday, we've got a game Monday and six points out of those and it will put us back in the picture. But we will be taking it game by game and who knows what happens. You know, it, there's always a team that makes a late charge for the playoffs and why can't it be us this year? Would you like the job beyond the end of the season? Of course, of course. And that's, that's my personal target is, is to get myself in a, put myself in a position where it's, it's, it's hard to say, I'm sorry, but you, you know, you've had a go and it's not been good enough. I really want to make this work. Um, I've got Kevin Braybrook with me as, as my assistant. He's, a, he's an excellent coach and I believe that between us we can, we can push on now towards the end of the season and get the results needed and, and restore the faith in the fans and, and hopefully ultimately make the job mine. Jason, thank you very much and good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you very much. Winchester City faced Downton FC in the Wessex Premier League on Saturday. The Citizens, who were six points clear at the top, knew that a second goal in the game would be their hundredth in the league. Aaron Summers went to the Denplan City ground. Winchester City took on Downton FC in the Wessex Premier League on Saturday. All eyes were on who was going to score the Citizens' 100th goal in the league. The condition of the pitch was a cause for concern with strong winds and persistent rain causing problems for both sides. But it didn't take long for Winchester to break the deadlock. Fine work from Danny King set up Dom Allen to score with a fine header after 20 minutes. Winchester then pressed for a second to the delight of manager Guy Butters. 
Andrew White should have scored on 30 minutes with this chance, a header over the bar from five yards. At half-time, Winchester knew that one more goal would break the 100 goals mark. But torrential rain made this unlikely. Downton were reduced to 10 men. Ben Smith was a judge to have fouled Andrew White. The opposition's chances soon fell from bad to worse when Danny King was fouled by Danny Finnegan, his second bookable offence. Jamie White then killed the game off after 80 minutes, his 36th goal of the season and Winchester's 100th. Troubles soon started after the final whistle, but both managers were frank about their play and the referee's decision-making. Um, yeah, good, good three points, really. Um, difficult condi uh, conditions, the pitch was quite heavy. Uh, there was one stage, Paul was talking about the game, maybe off before the game, so it didn't really help when the old downpour come down. But, you know, against these sort of teams, this stage of the season, it's about getting the points. Um, we've managed to grind it out. Uh, should have scored more goals, really. But, um, the, you know, the conditions, like I say, it was really windy first half. Seemed to die down a bit second half. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, overall, it's like I said, it's three points. Uh, we, we have played better, um, but, you know, three points, it's, it's what it's all about this stage of the season. I didn't think, yeah. I thought it was a disgraceful decision. You know, uh, hopefully we can appeal on it. That's what we're going to look at. Uh, you know, the lad's an honest. He's one of our best centre halves. You know, and to have him out uh, is going to be a big loss for us. Um, so uh, Winchester's victory, coupled with Burmerton's 3-0 win maybe, against Romsey Town, yeah, sees the two teams Thomas stretch a lead over the nearest right. rivals. Now, Frank Gray's last game in charge for Basingstoke Town was their away game at Sutton United on Saturday. After drawing their previous game, the Dragons were hoping to build on their mid-table position with a victory. Dale Gornell was there. On a very wet day in Sutton, Basingstoke Town the visitors to the Borough Sports Ground. Basingstoke have failed to win in their last two, whereas Sutton have picked up maximum points. Both sides are looking for a promotion place via the playoffs, and with many predicting a tight game, the three points would be vital. And it was the Dragons who got off to a brighter start, with Delano Samuels control letting him down, allowing Kevin Scriven to smother the loose ball. Sean McCauley then took a pot shot from outside the box, with Scriven again doing well. Sutton manager Paul Doswell wanted more from his side, and he got it 23 minutes in, when Harry Buterman fired home a 30-yard screamer past the hapless Ashley Bays. <laughs> And they could have doubled their lead shortly after when Craig Dundas got forward, this time Bays tipping over. The rain continued to pour in the second half and it seemed to dampen the spirits of both teams, with this chance the best either side could manage. With the game eventually petering out 1-0 to the U's, the win keeps Sutton in the playoff positions, while Basingstoke slipped to 10th. Dale Gornall, Winchester News Online. Now to ice hockey. The Basingstoke Bison welcomed the Bracknell Bees to the Planet Ice Arena. With 11 games to go, the Bison were hoping to stay in touch with the playoff places. Henry Lewin Titt was there. The crowd was buzzing at the Planet Ice Arena when the Basingstoke Bison played the Bracknell Bees in what has become affectionately known as the M3 Derby. Joe Miller and Jacob Heron led the charge for the Bison, both having early chances. Captain Nicky Chin found the breakthrough for the Bison putting them one win in front at the first break. They then had a chance to extend their lead, but Kurt Reynolds was denied. The Bees then got their first real chance for the game. Stephen Wool stopped the first shot and was swarmed by Bracknell players, but managed to keep the puck out. Victor Kabenko extended the Bison's lead, blasting this shot past Bracknell's goalie. Bracknell had a sting in their tail and closed the Bison's lead with only three minutes to go. They went all out for the win and subbed their goalie, but this didn't pay off when Marcel Petran sealed the Bison's win with a long range goal, ending the game 3 1. Henry Lewintit, Winchester News Online. AFC Tottenham have two games in hand over topside Brackley Town and knew that a win against Evesham United could see them replace Brackley at the summit of the Evo Stick South League Premier Division. I went to the test with Stadium. AFC Tottenham's match on Saturday marked the first anniversary of the first game at the Testwood Stadium. And Tottenham couldn't have asked for a better start. Only seven minutes in, Nathaniel Sherborne timed his run perfectly to meet Michael Gosney's through ball, round the keeper, and coolly put Tottenham 1-0 up.
But Evesham United almost equalised after Grant Porter hesitated and dropped across. Much to his relief, the visitors couldn't capitalise. Sherborne almost scored again, but couldn't find the net with this lob. Daniel Black caught in no man's land. The game came to life at the start of the second half, and Josh Quainer was unlucky not to draw his side level. But it was Tottenham who scored next. The Eastern defence caught napping from this short corner, allowing Sherborne to double his and Tottenham's advantage. But Evesham weren't going down without a fight and almost pulled a goal back. Lewis Tasker's shot was tipped around the post. The lead was halved with only four minutes to go. Henry Eves sliding in to make an interesting end to the game. 2 1. Two goal hero Sherborne looking less than pleased at being subbed immediately after the goal. But any hope of a comeback was ended when Stefan Brown, Sherborne's replacement, skillfully lobbed Platt to ensure three points would go to Totten. 3-1 the final score. Sherborne disappointed not to get his hat-trick. Whenever you've got a couple of goals you're always hunting a hat-trick so um, disappointed to come off regardless of uh, what's going on really but Steph came on and scored a great goal and won us a game so that's, uh, that's great for him and uh, great for the team as well. So. And that's it for Sports Week but for more award-winning news, features and sport log on to www.winol.co.uk. Thank you and goodbye.